Chapter Six of Just So Stories by Rudyard Kipling. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Six: The Sing Song of Old Man Kangaroo. Not always was the kangaroo as now we do behold him, but a different animal with four short legs. He was gray and he was woolly, and his pride was inordinate. He danced on an outcrop in the middle of Australia, and he went to the little god Ngwa. He went to Ngwa at six before breakfast, saying, Make me different from all other animals by five this afternoon. Up jumped Ngwa from his seat on the sand flat and shouted, Go away! He was gray and he was woolly and his pride was inordinate. He danced on a rock ledge in the middle of Australia, and he went to the middle god Nkwing. He went to Nkwing at eight after breakfast, saying, Make me different from all other animals, make me also wonderfully popular by five this afternoon. Up jumped Nkwing from his burrow in the spiny flex and shouted, Go away! He was gray, and he was woolly, and his pride was inordinate. He danced on a sandbank in the middle of Australia, and he went to the big god Ngwong. He went to Ngwong at ten before dinner-time, saying, Make me different from all other animals, make me popular and wonderfully run after by five this afternoon. Up jumped Ngwong from his bath in the salt-pan, and shouted, Yes, I will. Unkwong called Dingo, Yellow Dog Dingo, always hungry, dusty in the sunshine, and showed him kangaroo. Unkwong said, Dingo, wake up, Dingo. Do you see that gentleman dancing on an ash pit? He wants to be popular and very truly run after. Dingo, make him so. Jumped Dingo, Yellow Dog Dingo, and said, What, that cat rabbit? Off ran Dingo, Yellow Dog Dingo, always hungry, grinning like a coal scuttle, ran after Kangaroo. Off went the proud Kangaroo on his four little legs like a bunny. This, O oh beloved of mine, ends the first part of the tale. He ran through the desert, he ran through the mountains, he ran through the salt pans, he ran through the reed beds, he ran through the blue gums, he ran through the spiny facts, he ran until his front legs ached. He had to. Still ran Dingo, Yellow Dog Dingo, always hungry, grinning like a rat trap, never getting nearer, never getting farther ran after kangaroo he had to still ran kangaroo old man kangaroo he ran through the ti trees he ran through the mulga he ran through the long grass he ran through the short grass he ran through the tropics of capricorn and cancer he ran till his hind legs ached he had to still ran dingo yellow dog dingo hungrier and hungrier grinning like a horse collar never getting nearer never getting farther and they came to the walgong river now there wasn't any bridge and there wasn't any ferry boat and kangaroo didn't know how to get over so he stood on his legs and hopped he had to he hopped through the flinders, he hopped through the cinders, he hopped through the deserts in the middle of Australia, he hopped like a kangaroo. First he hopped one yard, then he hopped three yards, then he hopped five yards, his legs growing stronger, his legs growing longer. He hadn't any time for rest or refreshment, and he wanted them very much. Still ran Dingo, Yellow Dog Dingo, very much bewildered, very much hungry, and wondering what in the world or out of it made old man Kangaroo hop. 
for he hopped like a cricket, like a pea in a saucepan, or a new rubber ball on a nursery floor. He had to. He tucked up his front legs, he hopped on his hind legs, he stuck out his tail for balance weight behind him, and he hopped through the darling downs. He had to. Still ran Dingo. Tired dog Dingo, hungrier and hungrier, very much bewildered, and wondering when in the world or out of it would old man Kangaroo stop. Then came Unquang from his bath in the salt pans and said, It's five o'clock. Down sat Dingo, poor dog Dingo, always hungry, dusty in the sunshine, hung out his tongue and howled. Down sat Kangaroo, old man Kangaroo, stuck out his tail like a milking stool behind him and said, Thank goodness that's finished. Then said Nkwong, who is always a gentleman, Why aren't you grateful to Yellow Dog Dingo? Why don't you thank him for all he has done for you? Then said Kangaroo, Tired old Kangaroo, He's chased me out of the homes of my childhood. He's chased me out of my regular meal times. He's altered my shape so I'll never get it back and he's played old scratch with my legs." Then said Unquang, "'Perhaps I'm mistaken, but didn't you ask me to make you different from all other animals, as well as to make you very truly sought after? And now it is five o'clock.' "'Yes,' said Kangaroo. "'I wish that I hadn't. I thought you would do it by charms and incantations, but this is a practical joke.' Joke? said Unquang from his bath in the blue gums. Say that again, and I'll whistle up Dingo and run your hind legs off. No, said Kangaroo, I must apologize. Legs are legs, and you needn't alter em so far as I'm concerned. I only meant to explain to your lordliness that I've nothing to eat since morning, and I'm very empty indeed. Yes, said Dingo, yellow dog Dingo. I'm in just the same situation. I've made him different from all other animals, but what may I have for my tea?" Then said Unquang from his bath in the salt pan, "'Come and ask me about it tomorrow, because I'm going to wash.' So they were left in the middle of Australia, Old Man Kangaroo and Yellow Dog Dingo, and each said, "'That's your fault.' This is the mouth-filling song of the race that was run by a boomer, run in the single burst only event of its kind, started by big god Ungwong from Warabagora Garuma, old man Kangaroo first, yellow dog Dingo behind. Kangaroo bounded away, his back legs working like pistons, bounded from morning till dark, twenty-five feet to a bound. Yellow Dog Dingo lay like a yellow cloud in the distance, much too busy to bark. My, but they covered the ground. Nobody knows where they went, or followed that track that they flew in, for that continent hadn't been given a name. They ran thirty degrees from Torres Straits to the Lewin, look at the atlas, please, and they ran back as they came. Supposin' you could trot from Adelaide to the Pacific, for an afternoon's run, half of what these gentlemen did, you would feel rather hot, but your legs would develop terrific. Yes, my importunate son, you'd be a marvelous kid. End of chapter 6 The Sing-Song of Old Man Kangaroo